Richard doing again. It's Craig here. Back with this ProForce um, generator. Uh, belongs to an, an old buddy of mine, an elderly old buddy. Last video we, we actually had it fired. It ran for just a couple seconds. Blowed a lot of dirt everywhere. Um, I do have the carburetor off of it now. So we're getting ready to break it open. Let's see what the inside of this carburetor looks like. Well, that's a good sign. The O-ring, I don't know if you can see that. The O-ring looks pretty decent. Doesn't look like it's all deteriorated or broken, but this is not a Briggs carburetor. I did note, look there, it just fell apart. I don't know what kind of carburetor it is. I'll have to research, but it says designed in Japan. And then it's got an NHL on it. And I cannot find any numbers or any other identifying marks. So, but here we go. Wow, that looks clean. I mean, there, there's just a little bit of debris down in there. But this isn't what I was expecting to find. I was expecting to have this all gummed up with, with old shellac gas and corrosion and stuff. I may be able to just clean, even that plug looks good. Just shoot some carb cleaner through here and a little bit of brake clean. I think this thing will be good to go. I did ruin the gasket here for the mounting flange. It tore when I took it off, so I'll have to replace that. Um, that gasket here for the bowl, sorry about that guys. The gasket here for the bowl it looks like it could be replaced, so I'll have to do a little research here and um, see what all is available for it. And um, I'll get this taken clear apart and we'll get her cleaned up and put it back together. And um, get on here and we'll see if we can't make this thing run after I clean the fuel tank out. So I'll be back. Give me a couple minutes here. Okay, we're back. Um, had the carburetor apart. It was actually in pretty clean shape. Just a little bit of debris in the bowl as you've seen. I went on ahead and used uh, carb cleaner and some mixed part cleaner. And I cleaned it up, made sure the jets were clean, had all of them out. Made all, sure all the little holes in the emulsion tube and the idle um, circuit was all clean. Um, cleaned the gas tank out. There was some buildup in the pet cock, the on off um, pet cock that was not allowing the fuel to flow through so I took that out, took it all apart, cleaned it all up now I've got fuel through it um, I'm ready to put some gas in it I'm going to start it, hopefully it'll run on this bench without falling off I've already got my kilowatt tester hooked up to it and off to the side I've got a dual Right here I've got a dual 500 watt quartz light so we can put a thousand watt load on it. It should be you know, just just a little bit less than half. According to um, James Cordon that's that's typically where you want to test them is about half load. And that's where you set your um, RPMs uh, for your hertz. And um, I've not had the head off, the cover off the head yet so I don't even know if it's charging but we're going to put some gas in it. We're going to start it, see if it runs and see if it makes electric. Hopefully it won't leak gas. Don't want to put too much in it just in case if it does leak. And we do have a gas leak. Okay. I do believe, I'm not 100% sure here. Not 
sure if it's coming out from around the puck cock or if it's actually coming from the hose. Flashlight here. I slowed it down a little bit. coming out from around the pet cock so that's going to have to be replaced so we might not start right now let me turn this just a little bit and see if I can maybe stop it the pet cock is broken the little handle that goes to it where you can turn it on and off is broke I'm not even sure if I can turn up my pliers here not very little to grab a hold of there, so I doubt if I can turn. Nah, I ain't gonna be able to get it. Well, there I just did turn it a little bit. See if, see if that stopped it. Nope, still dripping. I don't know if you can see that dripping right here. It's it's a pretty good drip. Yeah. Nope, this ain't gonna stop. Okay. Well, I'm not going to start it with that kind of a gas leak because it's actually leaking pretty decent. So it's going to have to have a pet cock put on. So we'll stop right there. I get that pet cock replaced. I will come back and um, we'll do a first start on it. Okay, we're back. As you can see, no gas leakage. A little trick that I've used many times with success, this pet cock, the handle, you can take this apart and in behind the handle, the handle is attached to a plate and there's a rubber disc back in there and that disc has four holes in it. Two holes for the little mounting studs to keep it from turning and then two holes for the gas flow from the tank through the pet cock down into the bowl area so it can come out. A lot of times when you have a leak, and this is what I've done here, you can take this apart and you can take and turn that rubber disc one hole. And then that takes the two holes that was being used for the gas flow, puts them on the two studs to hold it in place, and then gives you two new holes with little raised indentations, well not indentations, but little raised um, areas. So when this is turned, it seats and seals. A lot of times that'll work, sometimes it doesn't. I lucked out this time. I'm still going to suggest that the pet cock gets replaced. You, know, you can buy one brand new for like 10 bucks, especially since it doesn't have the handle on it. So, at this point now, well, we're ready to give a test. So I'm going to turn it around. If it vibrates too much, I'm just going to shut it off, and then I'll have to put it on the floor and test it. Hopefully, it'll run right here good. So, gas is on. Engine switch is on. My kilowatt meter is in place. I've got my lead here for my 1,000-watt um, quart lights. Two 500 waters. So, we'll give it a pull here and see what happens. Choke.
just broke that.